I'm going to bring in Mike Davis, the founder and um, president of the Article 3 Project. Mike, thanks for coming back on. I really, There's so much I want to ask you. I really appreciate you making the time. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. You know, I'm going to start with this one, although, you know, I'm looking at these examples going through trying to, you know, just think about what I wanted to talk to you about today. And there's everything from social issues to a case like this, which is, I guess, a national security case, right, where we can see uh, it's a weaponization, you know, you or an arbitrary application of the law, I guess I would say. Uh, what's your thought on on this before we, you know, get into the other cases? Uh, this they keep calling him a kid. He's 21. It's not a kid. This guardsman's uh, predicament that he's in. I mean, he could be in a lot of trouble for this, right? I guess that's the one thing I want to ask you. How much, what kind of trouble is he facing for leaking these documents? And then the second part of it is, you know, I mean, like we still have, nobody knows who leaked Roe v. Wade in the Supreme Court, right? Alex Vindman was heralded as a hero. Eric Car Caramella, however you say his name, he was, you know, a whistleblower, not a, not, not uh, somebody who was, um, you know, betraying his oath. You know, it, it's double standards, not even the word, but I'll just let you respond. Yeah. I mean, obviously we can't have people in our government leaking classified material. And there are, there is a process. If you want to be a whistleblower, there's a process that you go through, right. through the inspector general's office and through Congress. So we cannot, uh, condone this behavior in any way, shape, or form. The problem is, is we can't have two systems of justice. This kid leaked classified material that was damaging to the globalist Ukraine effort. So, of course, they're going to go after him and throw the book at him. But how about, like you said, when Venman uh, uh, leaked, illegally leaked classified material from the Trump White House that supported the globalist effort, he became a hero. How about when Hunter Biden... Uh, Miranda, Miranda Devine uh, reported this, that Hunter Biden almost certainly used stolen classified, Biden's stolen classified records from the Obama White House to uh, to uh, to draft a 23 paragraph memo to secure illegal funding from Chinese and Ukrainian oligarchs. So how is that not an espionage violation? I am all for charging espionage uh, for in these situations, but you have to charge it equally. And I don't understand how you can charge these low level people for uh, for espionage, for leaking their classified material. But the most senior people, whether it's someone on the National Security Council like Venman in a position of, of uh, you know, the highest position of trust in the White House National Security Council or then Vice President Joe Biden and his sleazebag son Hunter, I don't know how we can charge the, the line officers and not charge the more senior people who have more of an impact and are, are more in more of a sensitive position. Yeah. You said there's a process that's what jumped out at me. Uh, you know, when we talk about cases like Snowden, uh, you know, at least it does appear he tried to make an effort, although I was, you know, obviously the information uh, that, that we, you know, we got from Snowden is valuable. Uh, but the, it, to me immediately, I thought Mike, he couldn't have gone to like Matt Gates. Like there's somebody because he, there are people on the Republican caucus who would have uh, not wanted this and probably would have turned their heads, but there are definitely people who are against the spending in Ukraine that I feel like he could have went to. Is there not? I mean, yeah, I mean, I worked for Senator Chuck Grassley, who has been the king of oversight and the, the protector of whistleblowers for 40 years. He is I can't the, imagine. Right. He would not have taken this. Yeah, he, he he's the top Republican on the Senate Budget Committee. Any whistleblower can go to his office anytime they want and they're protected. It's protected. It's a protected process. They're protected by statute. Uh, you, you, you can't have whistleblowers just taking it on themselves to just go leak stuff on the internet. That's just not, it's not acceptable. It's also not acceptable that we, uh, have selective prosecution of, you know, 21 year olds who did this, but not the Venmans and the Bidens of the world. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm looking at how they pursued him. Uh, the things that obviously were said about him immediately, uh, you know, the racial, uh, the, the in insinuations, he's a racist, he's anti-Semitic. I mean, they just went after him, whether it was true or not. It's a different treatment. Again, I really wish you would have went to the Senator or, I mean, again, there's somebody in the house that would have taken it. I just don't believe there wasn't. I wish you would have done it that way instead. Uh, but you know, when you have d these different sets of, of rules, uh, you know, v Vinman was, you know, he, he, he's been elevated now to 
to like hero status for these people. Uh, and he helped start this conflict, right? I mean, I think that's what people are, you know, looking at. Here's Vinman. He leaked. Uh, Eric leaked. They helped start. They wanted this conflict. They got it now. Nothing happened to them. And here's a 21-year-old guardsman who leaks uh, showing that the effort itself is you know, not what the, what, but the Biden administration has led the country to believe. And yet he's going to have not only the book legally thrown at him, uh, but the media, the treatment, what I was hearing, you know, when this happened and all, through, all throughout yesterday, it was totally different uh, than what uh, we've seen, even with other, you know, whistleblowers and people like, um, what was their name, uh, who, who leaked the um, treasury information against Trump. Uh, she did get caught. And what, what is this guy facing? What's going to happen, you know, uh, to this guy? What do you, what, realistically, I guess. I mean, I think they're going to charge him under the Espionage Act, um, and it's going to be a yeah. uh, it's going to be a very serious felony. He'll go to prison. Um, and I'm not he. I mean, frankly, I, I I'm not going to defend his actions. I think he should go to prison. But I also think that we need to uh, we we have to have equal justice uh, in the national security apparatus in this country, and we can't prosecute kids like this because he goes against the globalist war machine and then make heroes out of the Venmans of the world who oppose Donald Trump, who doesn't want to have America be a war machine around the world. I mean, obviously that the Venman who's from Ukraine, he brags about how he was going to go be the defense minister. They have to put him on a strict diet if he's going to go back in the military, but he's going to go be the defense minister for Ukraine. <laughs> He's bragging about leaking the president of the United States phone calls, right? He is on the National Security Council. You can't get more damaging to our national security than a president of the United States worrying that he can't say something on a secure phone line because one of his national security advisor aides is a subversive, uh, well, I have to be careful. I don't want to get sued. Someone on his national security team is subversive. Uh, has sympathies for a foreign country. So he uses his position on the National Security Council to undermine the president of the United States because of a policy disagreement on this national security aid's home country. Uh, it, I, there's no reason that Venman should not be in jail for that. And I mean, him or somebody else, although it likely was him, I mean, had, had this had been going on before the Ukraine transcript, uh, you know, w w the president released it just to get it out there. But the Mexican, the contents of the uh, phone call between Trump and the Mexican president, uh, that was released. I mean, to have presidents not have confidence uh, in their, com you know, in their conversations with other world leaders is an absolute disaster. Yeah, and I mean, that, can... that undermines, that undermines our national security more than anything. This 21 year old yeah, right. the president does not have confidence that he can have confidential conversations with foreign leaders without it being leaked to sympathetic newspapers because of a policy disagreement by some career bureaucrat who is, uh, you know, assigned to the National Security Council, that's outrageous. So, no, I, I think that this 21-year-old kid should be charged, and I think Vindman's, uh, you know, uh, should be charged. So, you know, this is one I'm, I don't, I don't want to take uh, too much time talking about this until it lays out. But since the last time you were on talking about the Trump indictment, man, you've been busy. And uh, finding these connections with the Biden White House uh, and these, you know, brag is obviously that one case. But it looks like the Biden White House has been a lot more uh, hands on than we have been led to believe. But it's not just Trump. I was reading the Fox News article uh, that you were in the other day. The difference between not charging, uh, you know, and, and I'll let you explain exactly what happened outside the abortion clinic. But the difference between not charging NOTA and seeking a 10 year sentence uh, for uh, an anti abortion pro life activist is one of the more glaring examples where you have somebody who vandalized a church, sprayed a ch member of the church in the face with the spray paint. Uh, when uh, they tried to stop them, they won't seek any cr prison time uh, for that defendant. It's just another, it, it's again, it's not even an example of two tiers of justice. It's because when it's arbitrary like that, there are no tiers, right? Yeah. So uh, explain to people why this is such a, I, because people say they, well, they're, they committed two very different offenses, right? Exactly. Can you explain what Hope did versus what Noda did and why this would be, this is crazy? 
Yeah, this is outrageous what happened. You had this Mark Houck was in Pennsylvania. He's like this 48-year-old father. He was with his 11-year-old son, and they were praying outside of an abortion clinic, right? And some abortion worker there got into a scuffle with his son, and so Houck pushed him, right? And what did the Biden Justice Department do? They charged Houck with a felony and sought 11 years in prison because of a scuffle, because of father protecting his son. Whether Houck should have pushed him or not, was he defending his son? Was it, you know, was he being too aggressive? Who knows? But seeking 11 years in prison for a scuffle outside of an abortion clinic. That is coming directly from the Biden Justice Department's uh, Civil Rights Division. Kristen Clark uh, runs the Civil Rights Division. Pam Carlin is her whack job number two. Vanita Gupta is the Associate Attorney General. Kristen reports to Vanita. Vanita is the, uh, the Associate Attorney General, the number three Matthew Colangelo, who we'll talk about later, it was the number two to the number three. So he was very much involved with this charging decision after Mark Hope protected. Same him. people. Yep. And so, right. And so the, thank God the jury acquitted Mark Hoke uh, of these th this this horrific uh, judgment by the Biden, Biden political appointees to go after him, try to seek 11 years in prison. Contrast that with uh, Maeve Noda. Maeve Noda is a deranged trans terrorist who went into a Catholic church in Bellevue, Washington, near uh, near Seattle, and destroyed this church. He spray-painted a statue. He broke glass. He spray-painted a church worker in the face. He got into a fight with the police. He scared the hell out of this little old yep. lady uh, in the church praying. It caused tens of thousands of damage to this church. It's on video. What did the Biden Justice Department do? What did the Civil Rights Division do? Because the Civil Rights Division is in charge of what's called the FACE Act in both of these cases. Uh, if you're if you're damaging abortion clinics or churches, it's all under the federal FACE Act. The same people in the Biden Justice Department covered this up for eight months. They didn't charge this deranged trans terrorist for eight months. They finally charged... Uh, Noda, I don't, I don't know what the proper pronoun is. That didn't charge, uh, finally charged Noda, <laughs> and I don't want to misgender Noda. It's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's be, you know, be a hater because you know I'd hate to misgender a terrorist. But so they miss, they they charged this Noda with a misdemeanor, a misdemeanor, right? And then they just did a plea agreement where they are recommending zero jail time, right? So you have this trans terrorist destroying a Catholic church, spray painting. The church worker in the face fighting with the cops, scaring the hell out of a little old lady, destroying statues, tens of thousands of dollars in damage because it's a trans terrorist, a Biden supporter, zero jail time versus a father protecting his son, praying outside of an abortion clinic, 11 years in prison. This is the most egregious example yet. And this is my point. When I say that when I'm out there defending Trump and people are like, oh, you're just defending Trump about this two systems of justice. Here's the problem. If they can do this to Donald Trump, a yep. billionaire, former president and future president, potentially, just imagine what they can do to the rest of us. They're going after fathers protecting their sons outside of abortion clinics. And this is part of lawfare. This is look, this is not our parents or grandparents, Democrat Party. These are not liberals who love America, just disagree with conservatives on the best way to get there. These are leftist. These are Marxist. They hate America. They, they, they hate equality. They believe in equity. They hate free speech. They believe in censorship of misinformation and disinformation that ends up being true. And they hate due process. They, they believe in Me Too and politicized, weaponized justice systems where we put Christians in prison for defending their sons and, uh, you know, turn trans terrorists into heroes. Yeah, these are these are people who are vigorously defending those uh, that they claim have a right to something that appears nowhere in the Bill of Rights while they persecute and prosecute people for you know essentially exercising rights that are right there in the Bill of Rights, whether it's the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, even Texera. The, what was some, you know the, this label they threw on him uh, at CNN? Apparently, he's a gun enthusiast. He's a gun enthusiast. So what? You know, what is that? But there, that's the Second Amendment is the right to keep and bear arms. In the First Amendment, he has a right, uh, Hauk has a right uh, to be against abortion. It's in his faith. That's part of him. He's practicing his faith. And he's, by the way, if he's out there praying outside of an abortion clinic, he's, it's a grievance. And, and, you know, there was the tussle, like you said, I mean, whether or not uh, you're defending your son, I'm a father, so I'm not going to judge him too harshly for that. You know, whether or not it was appropriate to be physical or not, um, you know, that's. That's something else. That's a different, 
you know, story altogether. But how they come after you, Mike, is basically, um, you know, it, it is what matters to me. Like, what, what were you doing? And when there are violations of the First, Second Amendment, they don't care. They don't care at all. They have these rights they created in their minds. I was talking to Steve Turley about this, Dr. Steve Turley on Wednesday, that viol- what you're really doing is violating their religion, like tenets of their religion. And if you are, uh, you know, wanting to see the, the justice system, uh, you know, properly applied to somebody who identifies uh, as being a member of the trans community, that's a violation of a tenant in their religion. You can't do that. And they'll come, they got to let that person go, be easy on that person, uh, while they got to hammer somebody who, who has more traditional values or is exercising rights that are in the Bill of Rights. I want to read this to you. You know, the Washington Post cracks me up. Breaking news. A new batch of subpoenas by federal prosecutors, which has not been previously reported, seek to determine if Trump or his advisors scam donors by using false claims about voter fraud to raise money. Before, before I even ask you if that's even possible, I just don't understand how you could sue somebody over a, 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 the, this concept of voter fraud. So uh, they, they think it's established or something. I'm not there myself. But... Uh, Aside from all of that, I mean, this is the same special counsel investigation, right? And they're just looking for new ways because they can't beat they're too, they're afraid, uh, as you rightfully pointed out, they can't beat him at the ballot box. So they have to beat him in a jury box, you know, in some tainted jury box somewhere. Can they do this? Well, they can try because you have this Garland picked special counsel, this Democrat Jack Smith. His wife is a donor to Biden. I mean, this is clearly a hit job. This is part of lawfare by the Democrats to take out Trump. Like you said, they fear they can't beat him in the polls. So they're simply going to indict him and they've done indict them. They've, they've done it. It's for the, for the for first time in American history, they indicted a former president and it's based upon bogus Trump up charges. There are five different fronts right now in their lawfare. Number one, you have uh, Democrat New York attorney general Tish James bringing a fraud civil lawsuit against Trump based upon the theory that Trump somehow duped sophisticated Wall Street banks. They loaned him money. He paid them back in full with interest, but Tish James somehow <laughs> claims that this is fraud. So uh, Trump is doing that, uh, the deposition. I think he did his de- deposition yesterday on that. That is just, it's, uh, it's it just shows you that Ch- Tish, James, the, wh- Tish James is probably the dumbest lawyer in America. The second dumbest <laughs> lawyer is... Alvin Bragg, he's the Manhattan DA, Democrat Manhattan DA, the George Soros funded DA. This is the second prong of the Democrats' lawfare to take out Trump. They're going after Trump for his payment of a settlement. He's, he, he paid a settlement claim for like $130,000 allegedly to Stormy Daniels back in 2016 to make his alleged affair with Stormy Daniels from 2006 go away. And Alvin Bragg's... Um, looking at a federal campaign finance violation here, even though Donald Trump allegedly used his own funds to pay this off and not campaign funds. And so this legal theory is is that Trump somehow committed a misdemeanor for uh, record keeping misdemeanor because he put it in the wrong books in 2016. There's a two year statute of limitations for this misdemeanor of putting it in the books in the wrong place. I don't even know how it would be a misdemeanor, but let's just play along. But there's we're past the two year statute of limitations. So we tried to transform this into a felony by tacking on federal election law, apparently, but he didn't put the legal allegation in the indictment and says he doesn't have to, which is clearly a due process violation under the 14th Amendment to the Constitution. But remember, it's just a, a laughable legal theory laughed at by the New York Times, the Washington Post, CNN. But remember, let's look at what the, this what Alvin, case, the Manhattan DA, the prior Manhattan DA at Alvin Bragg's urging when Alvin Bragg worked for the New York Attorney General's office, passed over this case. The Manhattan U.S. Attorney passed over this case. The Federal Election Commission passed over this case. And Alvin Bragg himself passed over this case. And then one of Bragg's assistant DAs quit and wrote a book, Mark Pomerantz. And so unethically, I would I would argue. And so Bragg was taking heat from the left. And so back in December, Bragg hired uh, uh, hired uh, Matthew Colangelo from the Biden Justice Department, the guy we talked about before that was uh, deciding whether Hauk versus Noda. So this Colangelo was in the number three's office, a very senior political appointee in the Biden Justice Department, seven years with the NAACP, 
Obama Justice Department under Eric Holder and Tom Perez. Tom Perez went to be the labor secretary. This Colangelo was his chief of staff when 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 uh, uh, Perez was the labor secretary. Perez went to be the Democrat National Committee chair for Obama. This Colangelo went to the uh, Obama White House as a political appointee, labor union guy. He went to the New York Attorney General's office. He, he ran essentially the Get Trump unit for four years, the Trump derangement unit for four years, where he constantly investigated and sued Trump, Trump businesses, Trump administration. Then he was on the parachute team into the Biden Justice Department and the number three's office. He was the acting number three. And then when Vanita Gupta, who's this left wing radical, was going through the confirmation process and got confirmed, Colangelo was Vanita's number two. So the number two to the number three. Bragg recruited him to go resuscitate this zombie case against Trump, passed over by all those different offices, laughed at by the liberal press. Colangelo helps Bragg resuscitate this case. Joe Biden sent Colangelo to Bragg to take out Trump. There's no question about it. It's yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. There's no question that that happened. It's not like Colangelo just quit his job at the Justice Department one day. A right. Justice Department job, went, and went online, found a job. Found a job opening in Bragg's office, <laughs> knocked on Bragg's door and got hired, right? So that's the second prong. The third prong is this Democrat, Fulton County, Georgia DA, Fannie Willis, is looking at the non-crime of a presidential candidate objecting to a presidential election and twisting arms to do it. Uh, that is a, a, a allowed by the Electoral Count Act of 1887. It's also allowed by the First Amendment, right? Politics is not pretty. And even if you say, go find votes, that means there are votes to be found. It, he didn't, Trump didn't say, go create votes. He said, go find them. And Democrats do that every day with their voter harvesting. So there's that one. Jack Smith, this Garland handpicked special counsel Democrat with this Democrat donor wife, is also looking at that same uh, First Amendment Electoral Count Act of 1887 legal theory, trying to turn it into a felony. And then Jack Smith is also looking at Trump for the non-crime of a former president having his presidential records in the office of former president, federally funded, congressionally funded office of former president with federally funded staff, with security clearances, with secure office space called SCIFs and Secret Service protection. That is allowed by the Presidential Records Act, right? And if it were a crime to have for former presidents to have their presidential records classified or not, every former president would be in prison. Uh, and look what former vice right. president Joe Biden did. He had he did not have the right to have these records. He had several stashes of stolen classified records from the Obama White House in several different places. And as we said, as Miranda Devine reported, Hunter Biden almost certainly used these records. And then back to Jack Smith, if it's if it's a crime to object to presidential elections, Democrats would be in jail for objecting to the Republican wins in 1969, 2001, 2005, 2017. This is all Democrat lawfare to take out Trump. Is this a tell when you read something like this from the Washington Post? Is this a tell that the, they, the pres presidential records act is, is just not going to do it for them? So they're trying to find, you know, anything, uh, you know, to throw against the wall to see if it sticks. Or would you just anticipate them adding this to a long list uh, of nonsense charges? I mean, if you're going in a direction like this, how could you even prove that the claims he made are false to a T I don't even understand how you could do that because uh, you know, I've read some of those fundraising emails, obviously. I mean, I, I, I don't know. That's if you read the article, it looks like um, you know, they're really trying to say that the, that this is illegal for him to have done this. Every campaign has made these claims, whether they're true or not and, and raise money off it. I don't understand what makes the voter fraud claim so special. It's it's complete nonsense. It's really, is this stupid? Is yeah. it really? Yeah. Remember, Hillary Clinton paid, illegally paid for the Steele dossier from campaign funds. Uh, Crossfire Hurricane Perkins Cooey, Mark Elias used campaign funds to cook up the Steele dossier, put it in the wrong books. She was also in New York at the time. I, why isn't Brad prosecuting her? She actually used campaign funds and had a campaign finance violation. And she used this Steele dossier to go after Trump. Uh, that should be a felony. Uh, that's actually a clear felony because she clearly lied and used campaign funds to do it and tried to interfere with the election. And uh, she also raised money off of this. So yeah, where, right. where are her wire fraud? Uh, where are the wire, wire fraud charges against Hillary Clinton for raising money off of her bogus steel dossier that she illegally used campaign funds to cook up? 
Yeah, that's it. I mean, she raised money off of the claim that Trump was a traitor who colluded, who was colluding with Putin. And uh, later, obviously, they just expanded that and stole the election. But she was saying, you know, th this guy could be a Russian asset. Uh, you know, they have all this dirt on him. We can't let a guy like that in the White House. And that was not true. But if you were to do this, Mike, then you could really just it would be open season on candidates because candidates lie in fundraising emails all the time. I mean, I just don't understand. E even if you're e I'm not even conceding because I haven't seen the, the body of text for everything they're talking about or what they're specifically referring to. But even if you concede that what he was fundraising off of ended up not being true. So what? I, every they all do this. Uh, I really don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't see anything special here with that. Let me ask you this last thing. I'm coming up on one o'clock. What do you make of the house's efforts uh, so far going, you know, you have the house panel, basically um, I think it's Andy Biggs, you know, bringing up the concept brag has to pay back some of that federal money. Uh, you think that's the right direction or, or, and Laura's telling me one more, I must've missed somebody's question, uh, so but do you think that's the right direction so, uh, or, you know, the, should the Republican House be doing something, something more? Something Look, bigger? I, I have been a constant critic of Jim Jordan on the big tech fight. I think he's terrible on tech. I was a total pain in Jim Jordan's ass when he first started the weaponization committee because I thought he got off to a slow and bumpy start. I have quickly yeah, become too. a big fan of Jim Jordan on oversight. I think he's doing fantastic work on oversight as it relates to Bragg. He's showing courage and he's yeah, it is well within his constitutional duty it is his constitutional duty to do necessary oversight here because bragg is using federal funds to interfere in a presidential election he's denying trump due process and equal protection of law he's not prosecuting real crimes in new york like rape robberies carjacking murders and so he could do this political hit against trump so i and he's uh, bragg is contorting federal election law. i am very pro Jim Jordan on this. And I think he's doing a really good job. He's starting to fire on all cylinders. James Comer's been doing a fantastic job on the oversight committee since day one. We're finally starting to, uh, to we're finally into a good uh, groove here with this oversight. And so I, I am 100% supportive and I think they should keep going. And I see what she's talking about. It's along the lines of what you just said. So I'll follow it up with this uh, dog. This is yours. Um, does, does Brad going to federal court now give Jordan, and maybe you'll understand this, I don't, but does Brad going to federal court now give Jordan a stronger tool to force compliance with these subpoenas, committee subpoenas, uh, as opposed to using attempt of Congress and referrals to DOJ that basically, let's be honest, will end up nowhere. Yes. It, 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 Bragg is so stupid for suing Jordan in federal court. It is a frivolous, laughable lawsuit. And what it means is this federal judge up in the Southern district of New York is going to issue a ruling saying that Bragg has to comply with the subpoena. Otherwise, uh, like Doug said, Jim Jordan would have done a, could, could have gotten a House vote, had to, the whole House would have to vote to enforce a civil subpoena, which you can do, but that's difficult to do, especially when you have a very narrow margin. Or uh, the Biden Justice Department, he, Jordan would have to do a criminal referral to the Biden Justice Department, Department for contempt of Congress. And of course, Merrick Garland would have ignored that. So it is so incredibly yeah. stupid that Bragg filed a lawsuit against Jim Jordan. But what do you expect? This guy's a complete clown. You know, this, I, I actually lied. I had one for you before. I, this is just personal opinion. Do we need a civil rights division at the Justice Department? Um, you know, I've long been a critic of it, but people, uh, you know, tell me I don't know the law. It was necessary then. It's necessary now. Do we need this division? It just seems to me like an, uh, you know, it's always filled with ideologues. It doesn't matter if, Hey, look, Trump's civil rights division wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't any better. It's not staffed with right wingers who are going after left wingers. Uh, but that's the way it, it seems to be. Um, you know, could justice survive without this thing? <laughs> well, I'll tell you that, uh, you know, it's the it's the Democrats, the leftists have taken over every institution in America. The justice system judges the yeah. corporations, even hell, even the military. So we're going to need civil rights, right, when they come after us. But I'll tell you this, when I'm Trump's acting attorney general for three weeks during my reign of terror before I'm chased out of town, I will fire <laughs> so many people in that Justice Department. I will indict so many of our political enemies, Soros, the Bidens, Planned Parenthood, BLM, Antifa. I'm indicting all their asses. I'm firing all these liberals at the Justice Department. I'll, I'll reassign them to the southern border.
uh, it will be a three week reign of terror. <laughs> Excellent. I'll tell you, Mike, you're killing it. Uh, people, if they haven't been catching on, on war room, they should, uh, you, you, you got that connection. You, you, drew that line right from the Biden White House to Alvin Bragg's office. Uh, so people, if you haven't been following uh, Mike's interviews on, on War Room, uh, you should. Uh, but what else are you up to, Mike? And where can people follow where, what you're doing? I'm just being a hellraiser every day. It's like I, I, I get, see it. I get paid to be a jerk. It's great. I love it. Um, actually, I spend my own money. Beautiful, man. I'm, I'm really dumb because I'm spending my own money to run this thing. But anyway, it's article3project.org, article3project.org, at Article three project at article number three project on getter Twitter truth and my personal when I'm not kicked off of Twitter, it's at M R D D M I A M R D D M I A. And thank you very much for having me on. All the best. You're welcome on anytime. We're never going to have a shortage of content to discuss this. So, so I'll see you soon. All the best. Have a great weekend. Thank you. You too. Mike Davis, all uh, everyone, uh, go check him out on Twitter. It's pinned to his Twitter feed right now. I've been suspended five times from eight. I think it may even be eight at this point on Twitter. So definitely follow the Article 3 Project, too. Again, it's at Article Numeral 3, number three, Project, uh, on Twitter, Truth, Getter, all of them. Uh, <laughs> he's like, <laughs> when I'm acting... Uh, Attorney General, I'll tell you what, I had high hopes for Whitaker. I got, uh, and he didn't, you know, he was dealing with a lot of uh, crap there. But Mike Davis, ladies and gentlemen, I got a feeling that uh, that that would be a real bull in the china shop. I'd, I'd give my left arm uh, to see that. Because I, I, I just don't, they, you got to operate under the assumption of what he just said. It's not even an assumption. We know it's true. They... These fanatics, these ideologues, they've taken over everything. So then what the hell is the point of keeping them around? Right, Laura? Right? Definitely pay to watch that happen. Oh, I would love to watch that happen. Mike is great. I know. But the fans, the viewers love him, man. That's so funny. Um, yeah, yeah, it was funny stuff. Uh, because they would have a meltdown after everything. Uh, why did... Fox News not find that connection. Why Why did it, it happen? This is his world. This is Mike's world. And I understand that, you know, he knows the players involved, his work he did with Grassley, he knows the town. Uh, but why didn't an investigative journal, forget about the New York Times, the Washington Post. I mean, we can just assume. Uh, I mean, they literally collaborated with the government against Texera. And I'm with Mike. I don't like, you know, 